Hi everybody, I'm Karen Gibbs, a creative director for Banyan Batiks by Northcott. And you are in Karen Gibbs for the Love of Batiks. It's just a fine group. We talk about batiks. Um, I talk about creating them and how they're made because they're all handmade, just like the quilts that you make. And I want to see some projects that you've um, you've made with batiks or something you're thinking about making or maybe you have a batik that you just love and aren't sure what to uh, do with it. Um, uh, throw it out there for the group and I'm sure we'll comment and give you lots of fun ideas. Today we're talking about collections. How do you come up with a collection? Because normally when you walk into a store you see a batik ball, right? And batiks aren't necessarily by collection. But, hey Cindy, thanks for joining me. But you are making a quilt in the end, you're taking a collection and you curated that collection, right? You took the batiks that you wanna use and you put it into a quilt project. Or maybe your favorite store does that for you in the form of kits. Um, so um, this apply that, uh, what we're talking about today to kits as well, or, or um, translating that to doing your own style of kit or your own style of quilt um, from the pattern. Um, because we'll, I'll talk about different things like having a light and a medium and a dark saturation of color and, and that kind of thing. And maybe that's what you want to think about when you're creating um, projects. Okay, so we've got Leslie and Scott here and Paul here today. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Um, I got my nails. Uh, Paul, see, got my nails. <laughs> anyway, Paul always comments on my nail color, so I got some interesting chrome going on today. Um, I'm wearing rayon actually. Did you know that we have rayon batiks? Um, really soft, very beautiful, uh, soft touch rayons we, ca we call them. And I like, I like it because I can wear um, like a three quarter sleeve and it's a longer um, coverage and it's just a wonderful thing. They're washable um, and you have to maybe touch them a little with the iron but not really a lot. Um, so I wanted to show you the rayons, aren't they kind of fun? And they're new, they're, they're coming out. Um, and this, is, this isn't really a collection, is it? It's one and, and two different kinds. We've got the luster print and then a floral print. So this isn't really a collection. And normally, that's what um, batiks are shown to stores. Not really a collection, more of here's a header. That's what these guys are called. Here's a header of batiks. And stores go there, go in, and pick what they think would look good on a batik wall. And it's really not so much project driven, right? Or it's not collection driven. And that's why um, at Banyan, we do it by collection because I find it's easier then for stores to put it into projects or kits for you to, uh, to make the different projects. So that's why we're talking about collections today. We've got uh, Judy and Trisha joining us today too. Thanks for joining me, guys. All right, so there's a couple of things coming up, and it just made me think of these particular collections that I want to talk about um, because I have some, some things, um, events coming up. So I know we're all anxious to get out. We're all tired of being cooped up, but have you looked around? Have you found the virtual events and play dates? Um, around um, around the country, have you have you looked into uh, Toronto and seen what kind of virtual events and play dates they have? I'm um, going to be speaking at a virtual event tomorrow night. Bits and Pieces in Missouri is having a virtual event, and I'm talking um, about batiks uh, for the love of batiks, and I'm focused really on a lot of Patience Griffin's uh, collection called Kilts and Quilts. There's another virtual event or play date, which is a birthday bash in Michigan. Um, I think it's the Upper Peninsula, actually, and you can join that. She has it next Friday night. Um, I think it's a full retreat weekend, so you get out there virtually and do some of these play dates um, and just just get the, uh, to to work with people um, and try try it out. It's something a little bit different. All right, so back to collections. When we're putting together a collection. What do you focus on, okay? Um, when I bring in a guest designer, generally they have a certain vision or something that they want to focus on. So we start there. And Patience Griffin, Kilts and Quilts, if you don't know her, she has a whole bunch of novels that she's written and um, a series that's set uh, in Scotland. Now she's got a second series that's set in Alaska. But her focus was 
that type of her novels, right? And the quilts that she mentions in the novels. Well, there are certain things about Scotland and she wanted to make sure to put that on a fabric. All right, so we can, we can talk about that, right? That's how we're gonna start the collection. And they were the black-faced sheep and plaids. That was our focus, right? That's the beginning of it, all right? So then you start to think, how am I going to create that in a batik? All right, in a cotton print, it's a little bit easier. You're not as restricted as um, size and technique. You can do whatever size you want, um, you know, lots of different colors, that kind of thing. Whereas batik, it's a little bit different. So you've got to try and figure out, okay, maybe this is a jumping off point, um, but do we have to discard that idea, the jumping off point, and then move to something else? Um, we were able to actually, let me show you, take the sheep, okay? And you can see the sheep here, they run length of fabric, so that's why they're, that's why I'm turning them. This is um, a header, okay? So you can see I was able to take the sheep and translate it, right? And the way I did that was the color application, like a normal uh, batik, and then we bleached out the sheep, and then we did a black overprint for it, all right? So that's a little bit different technique. Now look at the scale of the sheep, right? The scale, they're a little bit larger, so what type of quilt, I'm thinking, what type of quilt project would you use? Then we've also got the argyle, right? Argyle is very much, you think of, of wool, right? Um, and you think of argyle. So we wanted to translate that. And then there's also, you know, some uh, stitching, okay? Um, that we kind of thought went well with that. It's almost a no print print or a subtle contrast in print, right? Whereas the sheep is a high contrast. And this is kind of a supporting print then. This all was another motif that she wanted in there. And we did a little bit of a high contrast and we did um, some spacing on there, right? So when you're thinking collection, you gotta think, okay, do I want a background just like a quilt? Do I want a background print? So a no print print or something that's subtle. Do I want a larger print, a smaller scale? Do I want a, a floral toss? Do I want a geometric in there? And the geometric that we chose to do was of course plaids, okay? And you can see back here, we've got some other colorways, okay? And the smaller plaid is over there. Um, but we also chose to do this nice, beautiful, large plaid, okay? And there's a few techniques in here. Um, and we did, if you look at it, the way the, the color is applied, it's almost in a stripe, right? So the plaid has a different kind of effect than to say the sheep, it's a nice contrast with it, all right? On this header, and this, and like I said, this is a header that um, we showcase to stores when we're showing them the collection. We put in some of the essentials, and we have in here the Catan. All right, the Catan is that rice print, if you recall, that's one of my essentials, but it showcases them really beautifully with the different plaids. It, if you put the plaids next to each other on a header, it gets kind of jumbled and confusing. So when you're making a collection, that's also what you want to think about. You want to think about scale, right? You want to think about small scale and maybe large scale, all right? So that's the Kilts and Quilts collection, and that was, uh, hey Barb, thanks for joining me. And she had an inspiration, right, um, as far as what she wanted to do. And that's kind of fun for me um, to work with a guest designer because they bring in something totally different than what I would think of, and they challenge me and give me ideas of, um, oh, maybe I could try this technique for them, okay? But when I'm coming up with a, a regular collection, regular, nothing's regular in my world. Um, <laughs> when I'm coming up with a regular collection for, for abandoned batiks, I'm trying to think, okay, what's my focus, right? Is there a focus fabric? Just like in cotton, we think, okay, is there a panel or is there a focus fabric that we really, that we really want? Is there a theme that we go with? Generally, I don't start with a name, unless it's a novelty or a conversational, I don't stick with a name. I don't start with a name. Um, I, I just call it floral whatever, or I call it, you know, collection two or something like that because I feel a name can be very restrictive, 
okay and then you try and focus everything in that box and it's almost like you're married to it you don't it doesn't organically um, uh, continue you know um, you have to let things flow and if you stick to a name then you're stuck with it or in your head you're stuck with it um, so sometimes you need to let it evolve okay so um, a collection that we've been doing I love conversational and it's hard in batiks because um, you've got two colors pretty much right sometimes you have three if you do three chops so you've got to think of how is that going to translate into a batik um, if I do a panel or if I, I if I think about doing ride on or bicycle right how does that translate to a batik what kind of prints do I want well I still have kind of a formula um, I like a large print I like a geometric maybe a stripe maybe a border I like a toss I like a, a background style print I want it all together all wrapped up into a bow into one um, collection all right so I do have um, the ride on collection uh, the first one was released right on and um, it was really well received and then we did a, uh, more colorations uh, for ride on too and it's just one that just keeps evolving um, the colorways I think get more and more rich each time we do them um, I'll show you this one right on this is one of the first ones here okay and we've got the high contrast and you can see we've got here the no print print the hexagon or the it almost looks like a tread right um, and we've got high contrast because if you think about uh, people who are riding bikes they've got the high contrast outfits on because they want to be seen by um, by uh, motorists right so that's what I went with with uh, the ride on um, and then I also for ride on two I went with a little bit of earth tones it almost dropped it a little bit of earth tones so when you're thinking of a collection uh, collection also speaks to colorways right you've got to think about the colors that work with it um, and who is your audience are you going to be making a quilt project for someone um, who enjoys biking right um, we've got the retro bikes here and that's more of a toss right and then we've got some of the chains and this kind of gives you um, a meandering or a texture look this one is a smaller bike toss right and then we've got the treads and I love it when I can incorporate a uh, technique where we've got a sprayed look of color and it's a diagonal stripe this one is my my absolute fave and it uses three chops three different chop applications to get all of that texture so our repeat is a lot bigger remember um, generally it's uh, about eight inches as far as the repeat goes okay and then also um, I I wanted to do a border because quilters we like to put borders on things and so you've got a bike toss here and you've got a border there this is more the high contrast right is something that maybe you would see bikers wearing okay so for ride on three I wanted to do something a little bit different I wanted to go with two very very distinct colorways okay so let's start with this one here we've got the earth tones but we've got the nice mossy kind of greens okay we've got the um, the tires and this right here was a bleach out technique again I like to incorporate techniques all right and then we've got the small bike toss this makes up beautifully in a, in a shirt okay and then here this one I love mirroring the browns and the grays um, I think it, it just looks really really rich now if you saw um, in ride on two I was able to um, have it published in American quilt in the American quilter last summer so right on three we're showing right now you're getting a sneak peek the stores are gonna see starting next week and then this coloration is the high contrast one right we've got some grays so I have the light here right I've got the light or the tone on tone you've got your treads for geometric and you also have this um, the hexagons but this is like a nice neutral a nice background right and then we've got the larger scale in a print here a smaller scale here a little bit smaller scale there and then the repeat is large here even though it's a medium scale okay so there's a lot that goes on in a collection but that way it makes up really really great in um, a quilt project all right 
So making up a collection has a lot to do with color, but it also has to do with what your focus is and what types of motifs, whether you want large motifs, small motifs, um, if you want texture in there, if you want geometrics, just the same thing um, that you do when you create a quilt project. Now, I wanted to tell you next week, I think we should do a challenge. I think we should do some sort of project and um, um, I'm thinking about it and, and I want you to join me uh, next week, same time, same place. And let's get a project going with some cool batiks. I'm Karen Gibbs and um, this is For the Love of Batiks.